Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony and welcome to another episode of BNA Sports Talk on a Monday. Um, this is Anthony, I think I already said that. Anyway, so um, today we're going to react to the two games, or four games this weekend. And before I do that, I'd like to thank you for the huge amount of support and views I got from the previous video. I kind of woke up and I was like, dang, that's like three, four, me five times what these videos usually get, so I appreciate it. And I'm going to start doing more of that series, obviously, because you guys seem to want to watch it and enjoy it. Anyway, so we're going to talk about the games. So as far as my predictions go, I went three for one. Uh, a lot of people went three for one because they picked the Chargers to win. And that was a big mistake by me. Um, what happened was Phil, uh, Philip Rivers didn't have a horrible game, but he also didn't have a great game. They, he had 22, he had like seven points going into the half. And then another seven in the third quarter. So he had 14 points going into the fourth quarter, which isn't great. That that doesn't beat the Patriots for you. And now Philip Rivers is 0-8. Uh, I'll probably have a separate video talking about whether Philip Rivers is a Hall of Famer. But Philip Rivers is 0-8 against Tom Brady, 0-2 in the playoffs. Eli Manning is 2-0 against Tom Brady in the playoffs. I think that's enough said. Even though Eli Manning only scored 17 against the Patriots, he did score more than the Patriots did. And even when the Patriots scored 38 in that regular season game against the Giants, the Giants put up 35 in that final game that made the Patriots undefeated in the regular season. Anyway, so the key to this game was just Bill Belichick had the time to prepare the troops for this weekend. All they had was to focus on was the Chargers. Now, the Chargers had to focus on the Ravens at first, and they're like, okay, this team's going to throw smoke and mirrors at us. But then you had Tom Brady one of the best quarterbacks of all time, keen under pressure, and they were just tossing him around. Like, if you looked at the game, wide, re receivers wide open, and it seemed like the Chargers didn't prepare. This is this is the case. It wasn't much between Tom Brady and Phillip Rivers, that contrast. I think it's a contrast between Bill Belichick and Anthony Lynn. You know, Bill Belichick had one of the worst, as far as personnel, in the league. And Anthony Lynn had one of the best personnel. Like, if you, if you asked anybody before the game, you'd say... The Chargers have seven out of the top ten players on the team, and you'd be kind of generous to say seven out of the top ten players. Like, you, it could even be eight. And people said Philip Rivers was even playing better than Tom Brady. And honestly, I had a video prepared to make why Tom Brady has not fallen off the cliff. I have that video prepared for I don't know maybe when they lose, but I, I have all my points ready to be made in the, in a video like that. It'll just take me a little time to put it together. But yeah, there there was that. I. And let's talk about the next game. I got these two games flip-flopped. I said the Saints would win 40-24, to and then the Chargers would win 20-17. to It would be like that. The Eagles and Saints game yesterday was the low-scoring game, and then the other game was a high score, whatever. Uh, so that, the key to that game was well, Nick Foles' magic ran out. You saw it went right through the hands of Alshon Jeffrey. I, I thought the Saints would be more uh, come to prepare, uh, prepare to play that game, but they didn't. Uh, they they really didn't come prepared, and I don't really have a lot of confidence in them this week um, to upset the Rams. I think both teams, the Rams and the Saints, wish they could be hotter than they are right now. I mean, the Saints barely escaped at home against the Eagles. Uh, now, Nick Foles, he sparked another controversy. My reaction to that, he he inspires the Eagles to play better. You know, the Eagles' defense plays better because they, they know – there's something with Nick Foles, even if it's nothing. It's kind of like um, what do you call it? What do they call this thing that the doctor gives you? And like um, what do they call it? Uh, a placebo. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around me. A placebo. It's kind of like the placebo effect. Nick Foles had, you know, you, honestly, you knew with two minutes left with Nick Foles marching down the field, they were getting every single call. They were getting some lucky plays. You're like, oh my god, the, look at this again. And then how to go through the hands of Alshon Jeffrey. Now, as a Giants fan, I'm happy that the, the Eagles and Cowboys both lost this weekend. Uh, the, the Saints, I'm not too confident in them moving forward. Uh, Drew Brees is playing pretty well, but it, it, there's too many dink and dunk passes. I don't think Sean Payton is, um, especially against that Eagles secondary, is getting people open. Uh, the, you, there was never a guy that's like open. The Drew Brees never really had a couple of drives where he just drove down the field until really like the second quarter maybe. But really, like the Saints should have toppled, stomped all over the Eagles that game. But they didn't, and that's kind of concerning. So moving on to the Dallas Cowboys and Rams. 
I th- uh, I predicted that game, the Rams would win by like three or four points, they end up winning by eight. Nothing much to say about this game, other than um, <laughs> the Cowboys. Man, just when you expect them, just when you expect them, just when everyone expects them to play well, to, you know, to make it to the conference championship, this is their year, this is their quarterback, they fold. They fold. Ezekiel Elliott, like 20-some carries for 47 or 49 yards, like... That this is great. This is, I said whoever has the most rushing yards will win this game, and Zeke and C.J. Anderson combined for over 200 yards. That's that's exactly what it was. You had Jared Goff had enough time to start throwing the ball and start being a little pretty, and he did his own little thing at the end of the game where he uh, he ran and uh, got the first down to steal the game. So I'm happy for the the, the Rams. They they're pulling it together, but I. St- I'd still have a, the choice between the Saints and the Rams. I'll make that prediction later in the week. But let's move on to the other game. It was the... um, What was it? Oh, yeah, the, the Chiefs Colts. How could I forget about that one? I, I'd send my prediction video. I could see this game getting out of hand. Mainly because I saw the Chiefs defense. They're kind of getting uh, right in the, in the getting ready in the right time. They're getting hot. And this is the team to look out for. Their defense is getting hot. And Patrick Mahomes knows he doesn't have to throw for 400 yards and four touchdowns every game now. Against Andrew Luck in that offensive line, they only get 13 points. Well, pretty much six points because of the blocked kick. That was seven. Like, how do you... I don't get as a punter how you can get a kick blocked. Like, just move out of the way. Like, the guy's diving, so fake it and move over. Like, I I, I don't get it. Anyway, uh, the offensive line for the for the Colts looked... Like a regular offensive line against the Chiefs defense. You had Justin Houston making some noise around the edge. And you had uh, the secondary that did a pretty good job in uh, not get letting uh, the Colts receivers wide open. So I think the Chiefs are primed to take on the Patriots. I like Patrick Mahomes. He didn't make many mistakes. Um, he was calm, cool, collected. And, and he, was, he was playing with a purpose. You know, this is not... I was, I'm telling you, this is not the same Chiefs team. It's not the same Chiefs team from years ago. They have a new quarterback. Andy Reid loves it. That's why they got rid of Alex Smith. You could tell when a smart, uh, you could tell when a team gets rid of a quarterback, like an old quarterback for the new one. They don't, they don't just get rid of the old quarterback because it's like, oh yeah, we, he's old and, uh, you know, he, he, they, they get rid of him because they know the new offensive player is going to be a generational talent. If they think, oh, this guy still needs to develop, they'll bench him. They'll bench him. Like they did, uh, like, unlike what they did with the Jets. They got rid of Teddy Bridgewater. But they kept Josh McCown. They know, hey, Sam Donald needs, needs some time, but he's our guy for now. We'll kind of throw him to the Wolves. Same thing that happened with the Cardinals. But when Baker, uh, same thing with Baker Mayfield. They didn't think he was ready. But they, Andy Reid is an experienced coach, and he thinks that Patrick Mahomes is the guy for the future. And I, I got to respect that. Um, so uh, going into this championship weekend, it's the number one and two seed, number one and two seed. Um, so that that's gonna be exciting. I will talk about those games in the future. Probably tomorrow's video will be about whether Phil Rivers is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, so look out for that. Let me know your reactions to this week. How'd you do with your picks? Anything and everything in the comment section down below. Yeah, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.